In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a Unidrive M700 for Ethernet communications. We'll begin with some Ethernet basics, and then I'll show you how to use the keypad on the drive to access slot 4. Slot 4 contains the menus and parameters that we need to set up the drive for Ethernet communication. Once the drive is set up, then I'll show you how to configure the Ethernet adapter on your PC so that you can communicate with the drive using MConnect software. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we look at how to set up the drive, let's take a minute to discuss some Ethernet basics. To begin, every device on an Ethernet network needs what's called an IP address. IP stands for Internet Protocol. An IP address is made up of four 8-bit numbers called octets. Here's an example of an IP address. The first octet is 192, the second octet is 168, the third octet is 1, and the fourth octet is 100. It's important to understand that the first three octets of the IP address define the subnetwork. The devices on the network need to have the first three octets of the address be the same, while the last octet must be different for each device. A simple example would be a network that consists of a PC and a single Unidrive M700. In this example, the address of the drive is set to 192.168.1.100, and the address of the PC is set to 192.168.1.100. Point 10. Valid choices for the last octet of the address are any number other than 0 or 255. Now that you've seen how addresses are formed, let's have a look at how to configure an IP address in the drive. I'm going to be configuring an IP address for this Unidrive M700 using the keypad. The Ethernet settings are found in the slot 4 menus and slot 4 on the M700 and the 702 is this dual port Ethernet switch that you see here. So I'm going to be using what's called quick access mode in the keypad to quickly get to the slot 4 menus. To use quick access mode I'm going to press the enter button once and then I'm going to press and hold the enter button. Now you see go to parameter and you'll see three sets of digits here. And the way you read this is slot.menu.parameter. So I'm going to use the left arrow button so I can get over to slot 4. Slot 4, and the Ethernet settings are in menu 2. There's only three settings that I'm really concerned with there. And the first one is parameter 5. So slot 4, menu 2, parameter 5. This parameter is DHCP enable. And what that stands for is dynamic host control protocol. And what that means is that if this Unidrive M700 were in a network that had a DHCP server uh, available to it, then it would use that server to obtain its IP address. Well, there is no DHCP server here today, so I'm going to turn this off, like so. And then I'm going to assign a static IP by going to parameter 6. So I'm going to use the up arrow now, and here's the IP address. So I'm going to assign an IP address of 192.168.1.100. So I'm going to move my cursor all the way over here. And that's going to be a 1, make that a 9, this is going to become 168, one, 100, there we go. So that's the IP address that this drive is going to be using. And finally, the third parameter we need to check is the subnet mask. Now, the subnet mask is used to route traffic to and from the drive. So I'm going to set this to 255.255.0. .255 .0. 
which is kind of a common mask. So, to five dot zero like that okay so we've got our three basic parameters for ethernet communications next I'm going to save the parameters by going to any parameter zero and since we're already in menu two I'll just stay here and use the down button until I get to parameter zero I'll press enter up arrow one time save parameters and then the reset button and when it says no actions, the parameters have now been saved. Now, the next, last thing we need to do is we need to activate or update slot 4 with our new settings by resetting it. And that's in menu 0, parameter 7. So I'm going to use my quick access mode again. And I'm just going to make that a 7. Slot 4, menu 0, parameter 7. Now all I need to do here is turn this on and it'll turn itself back off. So when it says no action, there is no action and the action has been performed. So I'm going to check myself now by going to menu 0, parameter 37. And I'm going to press the outer two arrows here to get me back to menu 0 quickly. And then I'm going to use the up arrow to go check to see that my new IP address has taken effect. And that's menu 0, parameter 37. And there it is. So now we've successfully created an IP address in this drive. Now that we've got the IP address assigned to the M700 drive, let's set up the computer to communicate on that same network. Here I have Windows 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the Start menu. And then I'm going to go to the Control Panel. Now in the control panel, the settings for your network adapter is found here in the Network and Sharing Center with Windows 7. I think other Windows versions are similar, but let's open Network and Sharing Center. And then over here in the left column, you see this Change Adapter Settings. So I'll click that. Now your network adapter, you may have more, you may see some wireless. I'm working on a, a desktop here, so I don't have any wireless, but this is my uh, local area connection, so I'm going to double click here to open up the properties for that connection. Within this status diagram here, you'll see properties, I'll click on that. And then what you're looking for is here, Internet Protocol version 4. So I'm going to double click on that to open that up. Now, by default, you're going to see obtain an IP address automatically. If you'll remember, when we were looking at the M700, it had the option for the DHCP server. Well, your computer uses the same type of option, and that's what this button is going to do. By default, your computer is going to try to find an IP address from a DHCP server on the network. But what we need to do is assign a static IP address to your computer. So to do that, we're going to check this button here. Use the following IP address. Now, the network that my drive is on is 192.168.1. So I need to make sure these first three octets here are 192.168.1. This last number here, the last octet, can be anything other than 0, 255, or an address that's already been used. So we used 100 for the drive, so I'll use 110 for the computer. Now I'm going to hit the tab key, and when I do that, it sort of automatically fills in the subnet mask. And at this point, that's all we need to do. Let's click OK, OK, and close. And there we've successfully established a static IP address on your computer. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you have any questions, I can be reached at the email shown here. Please refer to the training section of our website for more information about our training courses and to see our current training schedule.